Some smooth jazz to yeah. start off your morning. I played the saxophone uh, when I was a kid. You and did. It was never, never sounded like that. <laughs> never <laughs> sounded like that. That wasn't on your playlist <laughs> to learn. No, no, I could never dream playing that good. It was, that was Kenny G, wasn't that? Kenny G. Oh Ooh, yeah. yeah. I didn't know you sound. were a saxophone player. I don't know if I I'd call myself recorder. that. If you'd heard me, you'd be like, you were just attempted. You were just a, a saxophone attempted player. Hey, it's that you tried. That's yeah, what counts. That's yes. right. By the way, I love your pink here this morning. Thank Get ready you. for Valentine's this weekend. You know, there's a holiday. Day coming up. Yeah, of course, today, the Lunar New Year, yeah. we got Galentine's on Saturday. A lot Galentine's going on Galentine's on Sunday. So, Evan, we're all looking to the forecast. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nedder and I will play the recorder while Eric jams <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, about as good at that. Yeah. Jenny, any instruments that we should know about? Uh, no. Okay. No, no tambourine or triangles? She will sing. She uh -huh. will, exactly. <laughs> good morning. This is Hotel Dell. As we start off the day, you can see that it is pretty cloudy out there, uh, but not too bad for the most part. We are seeing the possibility of a little bit of a drizzle coming in through the AM hours, PM hours. Those clouds will start to part quite a bit and temperatures will warm into the 60s. But right now we are in the 50s, almost across the board. Uh, cloudy skies as we start off the day. Again, satellite radar imagery showing showers through Santa Barbara and LA County. Very scattered for the most part and very, very light, but moving down in our direction. So we're just starting to see kind of that initial starting of showers across areas like Fallbrook, Palomar, headed toward Ramona as Candido. So we'll see it downtown and farther south in the coming hours. Expect that through the morning. By the afternoon, those things will taper off. We'll talk in more detail about what your Valentine's Day weekend forecast looks like coming up. Does that sound good, Jenny? You can sing it while we play our instruments. I used to say I was in choir. Actually. Oh, okay. So but you actually remember that. on the recorder. What did was that song we learned? Hot, Hot cross, cross buns. buns. <laughs> One penny, two a penny. Hot uh -huh. cross no, buns. No, Netta's fingers are Hot like. Cross it's yeah. all coming back. Yes, the ah, muscle we, memory. You need to make Wait. the recorder like a real instrument. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a real instrument. <laughs> I also took one guitar lesson and realized ah, I have no natural ability whatsoever. Poor dad had to pay for that thing. Hey, 602 on a Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Valentine's Day weekend, if you even care. So we've got just a couple of minor things on the map here, including this north on the 15 at the 8. Second lane is blocked with an obstruction crash cleanup. North on the 5 at Lucadia, this is minor, one lane blocked. 78 eastbound right near the exit to Barham, slow lane is blocked. And then into the fog and drizzle we go. There is a crash northbound on the 15 right near Rainbow Valley, just a single lane block, no big delays. Eric. Jenny, thank you. The, the county is trying to keep up with the demand of coronavirus vaccines. So today, another vaccine superstation is opening up, and this time it's in Del Mar. And News 8's Chris Groh is joining us live from the fairgrounds with a closer look at the efforts here in our county. But really, it depends on what's going on on the federal level. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, Eric and Netta. And look, some good news coming on that federal level. President Biden announcing that they have gone ahead and purchased 200 million more doses of the vaccine. Take a listen to what he had to say. We've now purchased enough vaccine supply to vaccinate all Americans. That's a month faster. That means lives will be saved. And some of those lives that will be saved will be vaccinated here at the new Del Mar Fairground Superstation. And this is the fifth superstation in our county to pop up during this pandemic. Now, it's not technically fully operational just yet. It will be opening today at 9 a.m. It will be open up on Saturdays and Sundays, but it won't have a full uh, week of days or even as many vaccine doses as they would like to get out until those supplies arrive. So again, uh, it will be interesting to see just how many doses they will get to or how many more days they will be open when we do get some more vaccine doses. Now to give you a, a clearer picture of the issues that the county is dealing with, leaders learned that as of last Sunday, county vaccinations had only about 15,000 doses on hand with about 111,000 sent to health providers countywide. So the federal government promises that backup is on the way, which is a very welcome sign to those that will be staffing super stations such as this one, which will be staffed by Scripps Healthcare workers here in Del Mar. We are doing everything we can here in San Diego County to um, have these vaccination stations up and running. Unfortunately, we still don't have adequate doses uh, from the federal and state government. So at this time, uh, those, uh, those stations will be running at a relatively low rate, um, but we're ready to ramp up to maximum capacity of 10,000 doses a day as soon as those vaccines are received from the state and federal government. 
And so today they'll be opening up and starting at 9 a.m. It will be appointment only, which is the case with many of these vaccine sites, including the five super stations. It is, though, both the drive through and walk in. If you'd like to make an appointment, if you fit into tier 1A or you are 65 and older, go to our website, cbs8.com, and click on that help button. Eric and Netta. Chris, thanks for that update. So let's get you caught up on the vaccine distribution numbers in our county. More than 550,000 doses have been given to San Diego. This is the latest update, and that means 15.5% of people in the county have received one shot. 3.3% have been given both doses. They're fully immunized. Right now, more than 78% of the doses the county received have been administered. And after a three day slide of cases under a thousand, our cases are now back above that number. Officials are reporting just over 1100 new cases of the coronavirus. 51 new deaths were reported here, bringing our total now to 2,955. The number of COVID hospitalizations is continuing to drop. And right now, just over 300 patients are in the ICU. Families are waiting to see what's next for their kids lesson plans. Today, the CDC will release new guidance on reopening schools. This comes as San Diego Unified has reached an agreement with its teachers union, but they want teachers to be vaccinated, all of them, before students return to class. News 8's Allison Royal live outside district headquarters to break it all down for us here this morning. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Well, you two are certainly familiar with the colored tier system because we've been living in one here in California. The red tier, the purple tier, the dreaded purple tier. But what if there was a colored tier system for schools? The CDC says that could be a possibility. According to CBS News, those CDC guidelines could be broken down into four color-coded zones. Fully in person, hybrid, reduced attendance, and virtual only. The blue tier would mean a community has low risk of COVID-19 transmission and thus pretty few restrictions. However, the red tier would be the most restrictive, meaning that middle school and high school students would need to be fully virtual. However, as we've seen time and time again in this pandemic, these guidelines are subject to change. The San Diego Unified School District said in a statement that it will open whenever it is safe to do so. The school leaders agreed on a, quote, reopening framework that centers on the availability of vaccines to all school staff who wish to be vaccinated and the continued reduction of case rates in the communities surrounding schools. Some strategies you can expect as schools reopen. They include universal mask wearing, testing of symptomatic people, contact tracing, social distancing, hand washing, isolation and quarantine protocols. San Diego Unified said it will continue to pressure California leaders to make the COVID-19 vaccine an option for teachers that wish to get it. Now the fall semester seems like a ways away. I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel like August is, you know, it's six months away. However, families with kids, they need to plan. They need to think ahead. And so the San Diego Unified School District said it plans to offer in-person instruction for the fall, but will also offer virtual instruction for families that would feel more comfortable with that. Of course, as we learn about these CDC guidelines that we're hoping to hear about today, we will bring you that information on air and on CBS8.com. So I'm going to send it back to you, Eric and Netta. Of course, a lot of parents wondering, uh, you know, why this can't happen now this school year. Well, we're going to hear from the teachers union for San Diego Unified here in just a little bit. The vice president of the San Diego Education Association will join us live at 630 to discuss why they're asking for teachers to be vaccinated in order to reopen when the CDC says it's not a requirement. So stay tuned for that. New this morning, President Biden is taking a step towards reversing the Trump administration's remain in Mexico policy. The Biden administration is allowing 25,000 asylum seekers here in the U.S. as they wait for their next immigration court hearing. The Trump era policy required asylum seekers to wait outside the U.S. while their cases were being decided. The White House says admissions will start at three unidentified border crossings a week from today. Today, former President Trump's defense team begins its arguments in the Senate impeachment trial. House managers serving as prosecutors wrapped up their case, urging senators to convict on the single charge of incitement of insurrection after an attack on the Capitol. They argue the former president poses a future threat to, to democracy if he's acquitted and not barred from running for office again. 
And we saw Allison out there with an umbrella and hand, so you may need that today. Ooh. That's right. This is Cardiff <laughs> this morning, so a little gloomy. Some of those darker, kind of stormier clouds setting the stage for the possibility of some showery weather going into your Friday morning. Uh, we are kicking off the day with mostly cloud cover across San Diego County, but you can see what is just beginning to push from the north down south, and that is this green, indicating some rain, light sprinkles taking place across the northern portion of the county, really the northern border with Orange County. And then over the next several hours, this will continue to push farther south, bringing us some of that drizzle. We were just looking outside of the studio here, and there is kind of a misting taking place outside around Kearney Mesa, for example. So if you're seeing that this morning, expect things to intensify over the next several hours, tapering off by the afternoon. Accumulation totals look to be between one one hundredth of an inch, so very, very light, all the way up to a tenth of an inch, which is still relatively light. So this is going to be a weak system that's moving through. Uh, weak, uh, weak showers taking place. However, the wind is going to be a little bit more intense. So we've got this high wind watch that will take place at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, we are still seeing today in the 40 and 50 mile per hour range in some cases, so don't let your guard down too much across the mountains and the deserts. That's where that will take effect. However, for the most part, the weekend is going to be very pleasant out there. Just a breeze uh, kicking in. Saturday, 60 degrees. Sunday, 63 degrees for your Valentine's Day. A couple AM mountain showers taking place, but otherwise looks like sunshine and a few clouds are going to be in the mix as well. I'll